Seven years before Sigmund Freud's birth, Ivan Pavlov was born in central Russia. He became world famous for his discoveries in physiology and psychology. Pavlov conducted experiments on the digestive process. An excellent surgeon, he pioneered a technique that allowed him to measure digestion across an animal's lifespan. He folded stomach tissue into a pouch, creating a stomach within a stomach. Because the pouch maintained its nerve stimulation but did not process food, Pavlov could accurately measure digestion without confounding variables. In 1904, Pavlov won the Nobel Prize for his work. To further understand digestion, Pavlov turned his focus on how salivary glands work. Using dogs as his subjects, Pavlov exposed a salivary gland, fed the dogs, and collected their saliva. When he noticed that the dogs salivated before the food was actually delivered, he tried to figure out why. What Pavlov discovered is called classical conditioning. Although it began as a byproduct of his work on digestion, Pavlov turned his research efforts to this phenomena. Having established a reliable outcome measure, his saliva collection system, Pavlov manipulated external stimuli to see how it affected salivation. He rang bells, tones, and buzzers. Eventually he found that presenting a neutral stimulus while the food is presented formed a relationship between the two stimuli. Later, when the bell or buzzer was presented alone, the dogs would salivate in response to that sound. The amount of saliva was less than you would get if you presented food, but more than you would expect without any conditioning trials. Pavlov's work was based on reflexes. A reflex is an automatic response to a stimulus. In Pavlov's terms, an unconditioned stimulus produces an unconditioned response. A puff of air in your eye causes you to blink. It occurs automatically. You don't have to ponder it. It just happens. Similarly, the presentation of food causes you to salivate. Or when the doctor hits your knee with a little hammer, your leg jerks. Classical conditioning uses a second stimulus to trigger the reflex. Before conditioning, this stimulus, usually something not part of the environment, like a snap, bell, or flash of light, this stimulus has no impact on behavior. If a bell rings, you don't blink or salivate. Before conditioning, it's a neutral stimulus. By pairing a snap or puff of air, the two stimuli become associated. They are conditioned or bound. If enough pairings occur, the snap will produce an eye blink, even when a puff of air is not present. So the bell, buzzer, or snap are used to trigger the reflex, or an approximation of it. An American, John Watson, popularized Pavlov's work. Watson believed that the principles of classical conditioning explained all learning. He described the mind as a mystery box. He assumed that personality was nothing more than a collection of habits, each formed through classical conditioning. Watson left two lasting contributions. He pushed psychology toward experimental observation and away from unsupported theorizing. And he showed that fear is classically conditioned. Fear is a reflex action. In conditioning terminology, it's an unconditioned response. If a tray of dishes crashes on the floor, you jump in response. When someone says boo, the unconditioned response is fear. But this emotional reflex can be classically conditioned. If a bell rings before you hear boo, your fear can be triggered by the bell. We often get classically conditioned to situational cues. Suppose a car cuts you off and you have to swerve to avoid hitting it. It's such a close call that it really scared you. The reflex is that the sudden stop triggers fear. The cues are sitting behind the wheel, the smell of gasoline, and the location right in front of the dry cleaners. It would not be uncommon for you to feel fear the next time you sit behind the wheel, smell gas, or drive by the dry cleaners. And if all three cues are present, the fear is even stronger. Although it took Pavlov's dogs many pairings to associate a bell with food, it can happen much quicker. We seem to be particularly good at making associations between smells and tastes and nausea. You'll notice it most with unusual settings, smells, or tastes. Suppose you go to a new restaurant, order seafood, and get food poisoning. You probably will want to avoid that restaurant or that particular dish you ate. In classical conditioning terms, the reflex is rotten food causes nausea. The cues which trigger that reflex are the smells and tastes of the food. The decor of the restaurant can also make you queasy on your next visit. Classical conditioning works best with unusual cues. Smells you rarely encounter, places you rarely go, sounds you rarely hear. We are afraid of lightning because it doesn't happen every day. In classical conditioning terms, the reflex is thunder causes fear. The flash of light preceding it is the trigger. Once paired together, we start being afraid when we see a flash of light. In addition to your body getting ready for digestion by salivating before food arrives, there are two primary applications of classical conditioning in everyday life. 
fear, and taste aversion. Whenever you're afraid, look for the trigger. The reflex is fear. The trigger is some situational cue.